Um, so before we get to the review and the movie in question, I'm just going to tell you now <clears throat> that I'm going to try not to spoil it for anyone. Now, if you've seen my book review, then, then, um, obviously you're going to know, but, um, this movie really, it kind of goes beyond it in a way. It's, it kind of differs by a smidget, but... It, it like it's different by a little tiny bit but it also kind of goes beyond um and it, it kind of it really made me cry um to see that how it excelled beyond the the point which you know many people would not think it would excel past but it does um so i'm not going to spoil it <clears throat> um so unless you've seen the book review or have read the book then you know, you'll still have something to see here when you see it. I'm also not going to um, post any stills on the video. There's going to be no um, pictures from the movie. Um, also because, you know, when you see it, um, it's just got its own look. And I wanted to say that as kind of a surprise for you. Um, if you've seen my two-part trailer review, the Christmas special... Um, there's uh, one still I used for each video. Um, there's also a little tiny audio clip. But um, yeah, I just I wanted to save this as much as a surprise for people who haven't seen it. So I'm going to try not to spoil anything. And I'm just going to name some things I liked and disliked. Um, the dislikes are very minimal. And it's not even dislikes, really. Um, there's pretty much nothing I dis like I di I didn't dislike anything about this movie. I loved it all, and I'm gonna try to do my review some justice because like I'm very misunderstood and um, I'm I'm scatterbrained a lot of times. So sometimes you know I sound um, like I don't really know what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna do the best I can. So tonight we're reviewing Zach Oberzahn's Flooding with love for the kid and wow 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 is just i don't know it's just a word that comes to me um when i think when i think of this great work of art so let's get to the review now i just wanted to point out that this film review um this film um flooding with love for the kid by zachary oberzon um this review beat out first blood as our first movie review now i know a lot of you are going to say oh well matt you did the hunted but the hunted was um a comparison video between the hunted movie from 2003 and the first blood novel that it gets a lot of slack for um, for ripping off which I don't think it did at all um, I had to stop production for good reason um, to insert this excerpt as well as the Christmas episode before finishing the season because it belongs here it fits here it's perfect you know and to add to that um, Zach was so stealthy and quick to send me the link. It was... I couldn't turn it down. I had to do the video now. Um, and seeing how... I was doing like six to eight episodes... Um, in one shot the other day. Maybe ten actually I should say. Um, like the Jerry Goldsmith and the Dan Hill episodes. Um, were actually supposed to come before the Christmas special. But um, they're a little late. I completely shut everything down to take the time to explore um, the trailer and the mythos behind um, the trailer and this movie and seeing how it came so quick I just had to do it um, I just had to do it I'm sorry um, for the episodes being late but it was for a good cause and I'm so glad I did and it's not like we haven't done that before. And it's not like we have we won't do that again. Um, 
And if I had to do it again, I would do it the same way. And this this film just owes it. It's so many more people owe the chance to watch this movie because it really is groundbreaking filmmaking. Um, I'll just throw out there that while you're on YouTube, um, you can also check out a profile. I passed by that sort of reminds me of the uh, Herve Atia documentary called Jumble Sale Boo. Um, we might do an episode on that, but probably won't be this season. Probably be like maybe next season sometime. Um, I'm not sure when. But check out Jumble Sale Boo on YouTube. And uh, once again, another special thanks to Mr. Herv Helv Atsia because um, a lot of our three hour uh, director's cut edition of First Blood, that episode, a lot of it, um, I have to give thanks to you because of the, uh, the footage you found from Canadian television. Gotta love the home team. And yeah, we, we just owe you a lot of thanks. So when we get to that episode, um, which will probably be the next thing we cover because I'm going to do it tomorrow on my birthday, December 27th, good old 1979 or 2013 if you want to say. Um, so we're going to get to that then. So, uh, yeah, um, Jumble Sale Boo, J-U-M-B-L-E-S-A-L-E-B-O-O. -O. Check them out. It's a fun little page that it's really independent and it's really cool and it kind of makes me want to go visit Hope just a little bit more which I'm sure I will soon so um the JSB has some uh great movie replicas and props and etc um in his videos they were so nice to watch and um you, you get the the berry house and the tree and um the junkyard sites and uh you know, where portions of First Blood were shot. Chapman, etc. Really nice to look at. And um, we can even, like, we can see the joys felt through exploration on that site, you know. It's, you know, some trippy, cool action figure uh, recreation over there as well. So, go check out Jumble Sale Boo. Um, I might contact them as well and see if we can get them on the show. So now, back to the Zack attack. Um, you know, some small differences. <clears throat> um, I can't say, well, I can't say anything negative. So, you know, it's really rare that, you know, in my likes and dislikes for a movie review, it's really rare that there is no dislikes. So, you know, Zach, this is a first. You're bringing it on home, baby. This is amazing. Um, so, to replace the dislikes of the review, we're going to replace it with small differences. Um, a little section called small differences. Because really, I had nothing bad to say about this film. Um, there's a couple things maybe I would have liked to see. But... That being said, you know, I can understand time restraint. Because it's like an 8 to 10 hour novel. And we're breaking it down. Well, um, Zach broke it down to about um, an hour 48 minutes. So, you know, I can understand why he left things out. And this is much more, I, I think, Teasel's story than Rambo. Um, so... I can understand why certain things were left out. But small differences, um, and they're not many. Um, I'll just go through them now with you. Um, you know, things I would have liked to see. Um, there, there was no um, onions on the burger excerpt from the book. Or um, the car accident that uh, Teasel causes when he sees Rambo walking into town. Or... Um, one of my favorite parts, actually, is um, the uh, disarm tactic that Rambo goes through in his mind when when Teasel confronts him near the uh, fish reservoir. It's like, I could have done this, bam, 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 I could have done that. 
Um, I understand that that would have been really hard to film. Probably, like, especially, like, after watching um, how difficult it was for him to put everything together in the uh, making of documentary, I can understand why uh, that would be left out. Um, and the burger, you know, I'm a fan of burgers, so that's only why I threw it in there. You know, the onions on the burger thing, because that happens to me a lot when I order food and it comes back not what I ordered. And in the book, it's there's a funny little part about that. But Zach did play it off good, like when he was eating a, eating the burger. It did really look like he didn't like it. So, <laughs> um, I, I I loved it. I loved it. Uh, moving on. Um, didn't get to see the um, like there was no Galt inner tube moment, like the uh, the tire inner tube moment, as of uh, being described as the. Um, the intestines uh, when Rambo slices Galt open and the, the intestines come out. Um, there was um, no part where Orville executes the last dog. You know, just, just minor stuff. Um, but it works here. You know, it helps to accomplish um, forging, you know, a 10-hour novel into a two-hour feature. Um, and believe me, he knows what to cut. So it flows nicely. And this film never once felt boring to me. Um, I was along for the ride the entire time. It was never, ever, ever, ever boring. Um, it was fastly cut, but it works perfect. There's a a mini. Uh, some more differences is there's a, a mini bear, like a mini miniature teddy bear, which fills in for the owl in the story. Which I thought was really cute. Um, there was no bow and arrow story by Troutman. I would have liked that. But I can understand why it wasn't in there. Um, I can't remember. Um, what was I going to say? I hate it when I get brain screw like that. Um. Oh my god. Okay, I'll just ramble on until I get back to that. Um, yeah, there was just nothing negative. You know, and the dislikes weren't even dislikes. They were small differences. And everything works here. Partially, I would think, to the point that um, a lot of the normal rules were thrown out. And it's just total fantasy and love for the novel and role play and I really liked you know I I really liked pretty much everything like there was pretty much nothing I didn't like um but oh yeah yeah the thing uh, I forgot was um I can't remember if the dead minor scene was in there um but probably on my second watch I'll I'll see um I also want to find out what the uh the scoring was because the music is beautiful and brilliant and fits it and just makes it so different you know but so good at the same time um i love teasel's sepia dream sequences and uh we'll get back to that um but other small differences you know there was no man uh like the man who comes off his porch at the end with the wife and he's going to shoot rambo um there was no shot of him falling on the bike rack, <clears throat> which I actually thought Zach might do. I actually thought he was going to go for that, um, because like it's all like the movie is almost spot on from the book, like pretty much almost spot on. So you know, I thought he was going to, you know, maybe bring a bike in, fake getting shot, bam, hit the bike, fall over. But you know that pretty much does it for anything negative I would have to say about this piece so you know anything bad regarding the movie that's it and there's pretty much no bad here there's no wrong here it's just great filmmaking 